Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. And for those of you that are history buffs, Pattaya was uh, an R&R place during the Vietnam War. Utapau had the B-52 bombers there. It's the largest, if I'm not mistaken, concrete pour, reinforced concrete pour in the world. Where those B-2 bombers were based. It's a short hop down the road to the beach. Yep. You can walk in some of those bars today and still see original unit photographs right. of bombers, special forces folks. Right. It's like a museum. Someone right. needs to take all of Walking Street. Yeah. And <laughs> Walking Street's a little different now. Oh, though. yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's a little different. A more, I was there last in 2000. Yeah, a lot more Russians and Koreans there. Oh, yeah. Some Chinese, but. But there's some of the the, the ambiance is still there. You know, a lot of the older bars is yeah. there, still there. You see some of the pictures, yeah. So I want to let's go back to Japan. Sure. You are 18 at this point. Mm-hmm. You're an electrician. Mm-hmm. That's a good trade, isn't it? Yeah. It's not what I wanted though. Right. So. Did you get uh, a lot of free time in Japan? Did you? Cause, I did. Because I, I did. waste. That's why I got in trouble. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. I squandered my time. You know, yeah. I, people look through your passport. Oh, were you there? I said yes. I can tell you where the bars were like. Right. And I can tell you what the night like. Did you go see this month? No, no. I saw it from a train when, and I, you know, yeah. and that's my fault. That right. I, I was well, young, yeah. and they gave us, they paid us cash in the army back in those days. They paid you cash. In the no, name? it was uh, we got a check, but every two weeks. But what they would do, everybody would get a check. You would sign it, and then depend on the, your department or your outfit, they'll get like two people will collect all the checks, and then go up to the bank and cash everybody's checks and come back with envelopes. And give me my two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. every two weeks. <laughs> but don't put that in eight. Don't put it in this eighteen-year-old hand because uh, I'm going to town. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I was pretty. I look back at that right now and just because I, I, my, my son's. I have a son uh, at Fort Bragg. My other one, just uh, the middle son, he was in the Rangers. Actually, we were in Afghanistan at the same time. It was pretty cool. Uh, he's a Phoenix fire uh, firefighter now. He got out. So, and I still have one at home who's moving out soon. <laughs> I'm going to be empty nester. So in Japan, yes. can you eat sushi I can. in this country now? I can. Or do, you, do you remember how good it was back yeah, then? Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. The food is so good. Uh, if I can talk about last year, uh, the wife and I, we went to Vietnam, and uh, we toured from south from north to south. It was a really, really good trip. I recommend going to Vietnam to anybody. It's awesome. Very it's expensive, cheap. though. It was cheap. It's dirt cheap. Well, I'm not retired on that army. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't have that tw- uh, 21 no, year special no, forces retirement no, and that contractor money. No, the, the 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 plane ride is expensive. I mean, we I Airbnb the whole thing, so I was staying in condos for 40. Ed has no time. idea what you just said. And can I? Can no I, idea. Can, can, can I talk about? Can I? Uh, can I talk about Airbnb? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going someplace. I want to come back, and I want somebody to have cleaned the room. Yeah, I want to pick up the phone and I want to order a waffle wrapped around a hot dog at two a.m. I don't want to play house in somebody else's house. I don't get Airbnb because you got to take out the trash, you have to make the bed, <laughs> you have to hang up the clothes. Oh man, yeah. Well, over there it was different. Okay, like I said, because these are like professional Airbnbers. You know, they have these condos yeah. they rent out. You don't have to do that. Um, and like I said, I was in. I'll send you pictures later, but you know, thirtieth story on the beach in Da Nang. Yeah. Looking over the looking over the beach and China that, Beach. There's a trigger warning for those of you who are followers who were in Vietnam. We're going to say some words, so this is the time for you to yeah. do your deep breathing <laughs> and put that Xanax <laughs> under your tongue because I know yeah. some of you here tonight. Well, that was the that was the party area. China I know. Beach. Did you do the rat tour, rat tunnel tour? I did. Man, we did that. In, um, I've uh, never been small enough to be able to fit. No, in that. you, 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 you. It's, it's okay to I laugh. Was, it is I okay. Was, <laughs> <laughs> no. They call it the Coochie Tunnels. Yes. <laughs> we, we went to – the last city we went to was uh, Saigon or Ho Chi Minh, and we took the speedboat tour up north uh, to the Coochie Tunnels. And uh, we went through this tour. But Did you do the meal inside too? Did you eat? I didn't eat anything. Okay. They did have a little meal yeah. thing. But, you know, it, you have to look at it from their perspective, you know, because according to them, they really beat our – kicked our asses bad. So I was sitting through this briefing, and they're like, "This this uh, old farmer killed a hundred Americans with his." It was like I'm like, 
<laughs> just just sit there and just yeah. So it was it was good though. We actually gonna go back. How about the way the the cook fire comes up out of the ground? Did they show you that? They showed us. They 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 told us what they did was they because in the bunker complex they would have the kitchen and they would cook, but they will funnel the smoke all the way down to way down towards the water. So it looks like mists or something coming out. Uh, wet, gra- wet grass yeah. and the whole process. Yeah, wow. yeah they, they were pretty, uh, pretty and, hardcore. And they maintain, they That's maintain, some tactics right there. They maintain it. You can go. You could, of course, you could walk through yeah. the thing. Yeah. I looked, at, I looked at the little hole. Yeah. And I was skinny then. I'm like, <laughs> no. <"Nah." laughs> yeah, my wife did it. Uh, I went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, you know, but it, and I took my uh, my little DJI uh Swivel camera there. Like he's got, he's got one here with him today. Yeah, it's nah, uh, yeah, not the, the, little, the little, the little DJI one. But anyway, nice one. Yeah, but we went through, man. But it was, uh, it was. I was starting to, because <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're deep in there. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was how good. were you? How, how did they walk? Did they know you were an American first? Time? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and you, and you gonna hear something cool? So at the end of the tour, they have a rifle range, and you can buy, you buy ammo. And they have they have these guns. They have an old M16. They have an AK. You know the all, all the guns of the war. Yeah. Right. And then they have some targets down there. So people are going before me. They're taking the M4, the, the M16. I'm pretty sure that barrel shot there. Oh out. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, and everybody's just missing, you know. So I just go up there and I'm shooting and I'm tearing the targets down. You know, the Vietnamese guy looks at me like. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, you've done this before. They're like, yeah. Go pick up those targets. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. Because he has to go pick up the targets and knock them all down. Oh, now, that, been, that was one of the first vacations you guys had taken in a long time, if ever, right? Yes. Yeah. We, uh, we, you know, we uh, devote a lot of our time to our kids, you know, even when we were the little. And it shows. Yeah. So we didn't, we never took, I mean, but we were stationed in Japan, you know, Okinawa one time and uh, went to. Fort Bragg, because I changed from being a special forces communicator to 18 Delta. And what, and what you guys have to realize, uh, communicate the whole special forces group. You know, I'm a big fanboy. Uh, spent all of my time near them, not with them, not attached, but in support <laughs> of 18 Delta is the medic, right? And and every medic I ever met was nicknamed Doc. Right. Did you have a nickname other than Doc? No, no. Everybody actually just called me Donnie. But usually when we deploy somewhere, they would call me Doc. Go see Doc. And this school is, it was a year long. It's, yeah. About a year long. If you get through the first time. They get Yes. <laughs> and I don't know if it's changed or if Pete is going to come after me, but I recall, this is going back to mm-hmm. the 80s, that part of the graduation was they shot a pig. A goat. No. A goat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you had to stabilize it for how long? Uh, a couple days. Couple days. Yes. And did you yeah. get to shoot like in its pinky hoof toe? Oh, no, no, no. It's uh, it's some serious wounds. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, the, they don't actually they don't do that anymore. That's, so okay. people can relax. Okay, relax. People. They don't, they don't. They don't. They have. They have other patient models now that are electronic and, and stuff like that. So, it's pretty good. so you goat yeah. lovers yeah. don't write us. K primes. We call them K primes. They'll call it goats. Goats. <laughs> That's a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, those of you that love those cute little baby goats you see at the fair in the petting zoo, (laughs) Uh, we did not hurt any of those. These were evil goats. They don't. They don't feel anything. No. No, we're very humane to them, even though. But yeah. So that's a couple days. Yeah. So it's it's uh, you get them the gunshot, either through and through, or what's called a shark bite, where they would. I don't want to get into it, but a bigger wound. Right. Um, chest wound, and what uh, that does is that prepares you to keep Americans alive. Shot. Oh yeah, yeah. It's very, very the the the, the patient models, the K primes, did a really good uh, service to us. And, and like I say, we didn't mistreat them. We you know we were signed, we were signed the uh, our K primes. We took care of them, we fed them, make sure they stayed. Uh, you know they were healthy, and once they were wounded, you know we. Took them from the battlefield, brought them up to stabilize them, then took them to the OR, 
and you know, I uh, they uh, they breathe the wounds. We did the uh, if they had a uh, chest needed chest chest seal, not excuse me, chest seal, but chest tube. Put a chest tube in there. Got their lungs reinflated and just keep them stable. Yeah, and and that pays off. I mean, you know, if you look at what's happening in the the, the last wars, look how I many people are survived now. That's right. I mean, you would not see, a, you know, in the Vietnam era, you know, you never see a double amputee. I mean, it it it's it sucks having both your legs gone, but guys are doing really great things with one and two legs and on one arm because you know the great training, not only special forces, but you know how f- advanced the T triple C medicine has come up. Yeah. So, so you you bit you not only went whole hog, you bit the big you took the biggest response. I think one of the biggest responsibilities on the team. Yeah, well, I wanted originally I wanted to be a medic, right? And uh, a wise, I'm not going to say old medic, but because I was assigned to special forces. So if I can, if I can roll back a little bit, the when I I got out the Marine Corps, and I didn't go back in because I wanted to go reconnaissance, and they wouldn't let you do that. So I got out, went to Japan for a couple of years with my wife, lived there, and I started missing the military. I knew you were there for a couple. What did you do as an American in Japan for those two years? I Everything from bartended. I worked in a uh, vegetable market in Skiji, vegetable market, uh, delivering uh, vegetables you know, in the morning. And I worked at the bar at night in Roppongi. Um, yeah, I mean, we did that for a couple of years. It was great, good experience. We didn't have, but I knew um, that couldn't. You know, I want a family. That just wasn't going to be enough, and I missed the military. And one of the f- final <laughs> things that helped you mm-hmm. decide to come back to the United States was a train ride. Oh, <laughs> oh what was your friend's first name? Uh, I don't know his. I can't remember his name. I mean, I, I, I've met him uh, one time. the The reason we were together is that. You know, a lot of foreigners will do, <clears throat> excuse me, um, little photo shoots, make some extra money because the, the the Japanese they love the guy jeans of the foreigners and you know throw on a suit and you, you know make Man, some you, money. Yeah, you just brought back a memory because when I was living in Pattaya, yeah, I was actually at one point bigger than I am now. Yeah, and those little and the Japanese tour groups with the flag. Oh yeah, yeah. Would look. And yeah. one time the interpreter was so nice. She said, can I ask you a question? I said, yes. How do you get so big? Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, it's not just from eating food. Yeah. They scattered. Yeah. When she translated that, yeah. like I was a people yeah, leader. You're a people something. leader. <laughs> but, you know, now I, I, I'm mad because I didn't charge them for all those pictures I took. Right. Yeah. You should have. Yeah. I took lots of pictures of them. So yeah. we all have defining moments when we decide we've had it where we are. We're going to move on. We're going to move forward. I love what you did in Japan. I love what happened in Japan. <laughs> I, I couldn't take so, it anymore. So. Okay. Two days before you decided it was it. Or yeah. Actually, two days before you, what happened? So we were coming back from this uh, little uh, photo shoot and riding on a train, and me and this uh, this white guy, American guy, and sitting across from us was a Japanese guy, uh, uh, Japanese guy, a businessman, a salary man, they call him, right? And you usually see them in the evenings. They'll have their suit on. You know, their tie will be undone. They'll have their briefcase, and their face will be beat red because they go out drinking. Right, sake and partying. So he was just looking at us and just constantly just looking at us, you know. And then and so his stop came, and then he stood up to the by the door and he looked at us. He goes, "American, black man, white man, you die." <laughs> it's like he was wait trying. for it. He's gonna tell you what he did next. I was like, I've had I had enough of this shit, dude. Hold my bag. So the door opened up. I knew exactly about how much time I had before the door closed, and I went. I went and I followed him, I tapped him, I show you, look back, and I socked him. <laughs> I try, not not so hard, but enough to kind of drop him. Got back on the train and left, and I'm like, hey, baby, we're going back to America. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty good. I got my orders. I didn't know where I was going, and it says uh, first special forces group, I'm like Washington. Oh man, Washington State. Oh man, the guys were like, dude, you're lucky. <laughs> That's a good place to do. That's a good unit because you're not going to have to worry about going to the 82nd Airborne and packing a thousand shoots a, a week. 